It's that time of year yet again. Baseball season opening day is just around the corner, and our good friend Aaron Fit, the co-editor and national writer for the guys over at D1Baseball.com, who does a fantastic job. They do a great job, D1Baseball.com. Go check them out. But Aaron Fit joins the show once again to talk all things college baseball. Aaron, appreciate you taking the time, my friend. It feels good to say we are less than one month away from opening day. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I was just, you know, plowing through the conference previews. It's that time of year, D1 Baseball. We're, we're cranking out the content right now. Does it ever feel overwhelming, Aaron, trying to knock it? Because it's because it's a lot different than say like a football where you're focused on a quote unquote power five. I mean, you're you're talking about teams like UC Santa Barbara and Northeastern, and there's a lot of teams that maybe some other sports we're, we're not highlighting that are really good clubs, and it's a lot to keep up with. You ever feel like you're getting a little overwhelmed with it? It's it's a it's a lot of work, I'll tell you, because you know we we preview all 300 plus teams in Division One. Um, unfortunately, we've got a great staff and, and it's all hands on deck this time of year, but it's, uh, it's a lot of information to process. And, you know, we're fortunate we got out there and saw a lot of teams in the fall. You know, we, we posted, I don't know, 110 fall reports, I think, on the site this year, um, touched on all the Power Five teams and a whole bunch of others. So uh, I feel like that gives us a really good foundation heading into the, the season preview, but it's still it's still a grind to get through this thing. But, I, you know, we love it. It's It's a lot of fun. So, Aaron, with that being said, before we move into the 2024 season and specifically the SEC, let's talk about a pair of programs that will be in the SEC next year. That is Texas and Oklahoma. What most excites you about what the Longhorns and the Sooners bring to the Southeastern Conference? You know, OU, a really solid program, and obviously the the success that Texas has had on the diamond really speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, Texas really is kind of – uh, right there, probably with with LSU and and I guess you would say USC from a historic standpoint. Uh, but nobody's been to the College World Series more, you know, over the course of, of the history of the sport than, than Texas. I mean, it's uh, you know, obviously they've they've won national titles, but also just the consistent excellence. Uh, it's it's a gold standard type program, and and so you stick them into the the gold standard league, and it's just kind of unbelievable, you know, how the rich keep getting richer. And in Oklahoma, I mean, they're two years removed from appearance in the CWS finals. Um, they have also won a national title back in, in 1994 and, um, you know, a consistent winner. There's a, there's a lot that those programs bring to the league as far as, you know, opening more more doorways of talent in, in, in that part of the country. Obviously, you, you already had Texas A&M in that league, league but, uh, um, you know, I, I think that just gives this league a bigger footprint and more recruiting inroads and more opportunity to, to bring high-end talent uh, into the SEC. So, Aaron, as we take a look at the D1 Baseball Top 25, which certainly this this didn't uh, ruffle any feathers, right? Nobody had any disagreements at all with the Top 25. No, it's, it's uh, always a lot of fun looking at the season that's upcoming and debating, if you will. I, I want to first start with a couple of teams that just missed the Top 25 because you guys just published a piece at our time of our conversation, uh, 15 more teams to watch. There were three SEC teams that were mentioned in that article, Auburn, Kentucky, and Ole Miss. If you had to pick Aaron specifically, which of those three would you say was the most difficult to leave out of the top 25? And what do you like about those three clubs specifically? Yeah. Auburn was tough to omit because, you know, they just have a tendency uh, to perform, I think, above their talent level. And, and it's, you know, it's not that uncommon for Auburn to head into a season with some question marks. And sometimes you look at their roster, you're like, yeah, they look okay. And then at the end of the year, you, you look up and they're hosting a regional or they're making an Omaha run. And that, that's happened pretty consistently under Butch Thompson. Um, and, and I do like their roster. You know, I mean, there, there's um, there's there's a nice balance there with some experience returning. I mean, some guys that they need to take the next step forward, you know, like Irish and Bobby Pierce in particular. They, they lost some power from last year's team. They need those guys to kind of – take the next step from a power production standpoint. They need, you know, maybe even a more consistent year from Cooper McMurray. Um, you kind of line them up with some of the other SEC offenses and, and you think, well, do they have as much firepower? They might not, um, but they did a good job with the the transfer portal. You know, they had to really remake their whole infield. And I think they did a, a pretty nice job with that, but we need to see how those pieces all fit together and how that, how that looks. And really the big thing is the question mark for us is, you know, is Joseph Gonzalez going to be healthy at the top of the rotation? We, we've seen what he can do when he is healthy two years ago. Um, he was a star as a freshman and was a Team USA guy. And then, you know, last year was a lost season and, you know, still kind of a question mark through the fall. We don't really know what they're going to get from him. 
And the other the other thing is Chase Alsop, who has got a, a huge arm. I mean, it's really, really big time stuff, but has not thrown enough strikes through his first two seasons on the planes. And so they're really counting those two guys to to you know come in strong and, and kind of anchor that pitching staff. And that's a little bit of a question mark right now. And so that's why they didn't crack the top twenty five, but it does feel like a team that's knocking right on the door and you know, if history holds, it'll probably make us look silly again and, and wind up being a top 16 team. But, it, you know, there's so much competition in that league. I mean, there's nine teams in the rankings from the SEC that we like a lot. And, you know, all of them just a tick more than Auburn. Aaron, of the Mississippi schools, this feels like a really big year. Of course, I'm talking about the big two, Ole Miss and Mississippi State. And just to to your point about the depth of the league, you think back to last year, two teams missed the SEC tournament. They were Ole Miss and Mississippi State, the two previous national champions. So that goes to show just how quickly this league can come up and bite you if you're not playing your best baseball. Of those two teams, who do you think is more likely to have the bigger bounce back year, if you will? Because certainly both of those fan bases and programs are looking to return to glory and where they feel like they belong in the college baseball landscape. Yeah, and they're both capable of it. There's no question about it. I mean, um, you know, Mississippi State, it feels like – the lineup should be really good, you know, I mean, and really the lineup wasn't a problem last year. Either. They were pretty good offensively. It's just the, the pitching piece. And boy, if they can throw more strikes, you know, then there'll be a, a regional team that could, that could host. I mean, it's, that's, and we've gotten, got them as the 12 or 13th team in the league, which seems, seems crazy. Cause if you line their talent up with, in, and stick them in any other league, uh, they're an easy regional team. It's just that there's so much depth in the SEC and there's uncertainty there. You know, they need more out of out of Nate Dome and Gerangelo Sinche and, and, and you know, Colby Holcomb. And these guys have big stuff and just haven't quite done it yet. You know, they just haven't gotten the, the consistency out of those guys. Dome was really good in the bullpen last year, but uh, it sounds like they're, they're going to try to make him a starter all year long. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But I, I do like the pieces. I, I do think that Ole Miss probably has – um, a little bit of a safer floor just because I love what they did with the portal. You know, they, they had to totally remake their lineup. All nine starters from that team two years ago that won it all are gone. And so uh, they had to go out there and, and, and hit the, the portal pretty aggressively. And I thought they did a great job with it. You know, you're looking at five or, or four or five new guys that are going to hit, you know, the top half of their order, really. I mean, Luke Hill at, at shortstop is, is a really key piece. And Trayson Hughes, they got from Mercer, brings some power and speed to the outfield. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, I think Jackson Ross from Florida Atlantic gets a physical, mature veteran bat on the corner. So they, they did very well um, when it came to retooling their their lineup. And they've got some power arms now that also need to take a step. That's, that's why they're not in the top 25 is because we haven't seen it yet. Uh, but like Mississippi State, I mean, if they throw strikes consistently, if they command the zone, I mean, JT Quinn, Xavier Rivas, Grayson Sonia, that's that's extremely talented trio. They just all had ERAs in the sixes last year. And so it's like, are they going to take that next step? I like the fact that all of them gained a year of experience as weekend starters in the league. You would think that that will probably help them um, take that next step forward, but it's still an unknown. So, but that's a team that I, if, if those guys click, I mean, and I saw all those guys in the fall, they all look good. I mean, JT Quinn had a great fall, you know, and it's uh it's top line stuff. I mean, high nineties with four pitches and uh, it seems like the pitchability is coming for him. Um, if those guys can take that next step, I mean, that could be, you know, it could be a top 10 team this year. It really wouldn't surprise me. It's just, there's so much variance. Somebody has got to finish last in the sec and sixth and uh, in, in the West that is, you know, I mean, there's, there's seven teams that all look like they're postseason caliber. They're not all going to make the postseason. And so you just got to try to line them up and, and see how it shakes out once it was the games get going. Six of the top nine in the preseason D1 baseball top 25 are from the SEC. I first want to start, Aaron, with LSU. Uh, you know, you lose Paul Skeens, you lose Dylan Cruz. Th that would really handicap many other clubs. You got Tommy Tanks back. They got a lefty I keep hearing about that's touching 100 miles an hour. Simply put, do you think Jay Johnson has the club with the potential to be to become back to back national champs for the first time in over a decade that any team has done it. Yeah, they got a shot, no question. I mean, they're a top five team for a reason. And really, uh, we spent a lot of time as a staff debating the order of those top four. I, I think we we all believe there's a little bit of a, a separation between the top four teams 
in, in our rankings than, than everybody else. And that's, you know, Wake Forest, uh, the ACC, and then it's three SEC teams, Florida, um, Arkansas, and LSU. And, you know, we went round and round on this. We all had different opinions. We lined them up in different orders. You can make a case for LSU at number one. I mean, they might be the best of, of this group. I, you know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, certainly there, there are questions that LSU has to answer too. There's not as much proven um, firepower in the lineup. I mean, they need uh, Paxton Kling, for instance, to, to make that sophomore leap and become a, a star. He's got superstar potential. He turned down, I think, two million bucks out of high school. You know, he's he's got pedigree. Now let's see him perform. Um, you know, Tommy White is, is is a stud, of course, maybe the best hitter in the whole country. But after that, you know, the supporting cast, I mean, I think Jared Jones, he had a great freshman year. That's another really nice piece. But there's some other, other things that they kind of need to figure out uh, in the lineup. And and even on the mound, I mean, the talent is is undeniable. You know, I mean, with, with Thatcher Hurd, Luke Coleman, if Gage jump comes back strong from Tommy John, again, that's a, a chance to be a really good uh, trio there in the rotation. But out of those three, I mean, Holman is the most proven as an SEC starter, and, and I have no no worries about him. He's going to be great for him. Um, Heard was up and down. He's been up and down, you know, his whole career, and he was electric last year uh, in the postseason. But it took him a while to get there. Is, is he going to be able to now take that next step and, and replace Paul Skeens as, as a Friday night guy? Maybe. Um, we certainly are pretty optimistic. We wouldn't rank him in the top five, but uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit less certainty with this team than there was last year. I do love the bullpen. You kind of alluded to Cam Johnson, the, the freshman who throws a hundred to the left side. I mean, it's, it's a rare bird right there. You know, that that's like a world is Chapman territory. You don't see lefties that with that kind of stuff. And so he's got a chance to be really special probably in the bullpen this year, which, you know, which, could be a huge difference maker. I mean, you, you pair that guy with, with Gavin Guidry and, and Griffin Herring. Boy, uh, I'll, I'll take my chances with those three guys at the back end anytime. Aaron, Florida feels like a bit of a baseball factory at this point, right? They just reload every single year, right? They lose arms. They bring out other first and second rounders, what have you. You get Jack Caglione back. This is already a team that was in the, the, the College World Series final last year, fell to LSU, but I mean – Florida's as good a pick as any, I feel like, right, to, to win it all this season, led by, again, Jack Caglion, who, is it fair to say, the best player in all of college baseball? He's definitely the most talented player. I don't think there's any question about that because, you know, you, you try to avoid hyperbole, but you, you can't really help it with this guy because the, the raw tools, I don't think there's ever been a college player with as much, you know, upside as both a hitter and a pitcher. We're talking about, again, a left-hander that, that can throw 100. I mean, it's, it's it, it, that oldest Chapman type thing we're talking about. There's like two of those guys in the whole country. It, it's it's Cam Johnson and it's it's Cags. Uh, you've got to throw a few few more strikes, come in the zone better. You know, secondary stuff needs to continue to develop in order for him to kind of hit that ceiling. But he, he was good last year as a Sunday starter. Um, the upside on the mound is, is enormous, but obviously he's he's more established as, as a hitter. I mean, 33 home runs last year kind of speaks for itself. Um, he's, he's, you can make a case. He's the best player in the country, even if the pitching doesn't take another step just with the value that he brings as a position player and as a guy that can go out and give you quality innings, even if they're sometimes erratic, uh, if that pitching does take another step, the pitchability piece, then it's just historic, historic territory here. So yeah, he, he's, he's the, the kind of the, the guy in the middle, but, uh, I love their whole lineup. I mean, for me, I think it's probably the best offensive club in the country. Um, you know, so much power. It's really top of the charts power throughout this order with, with Luke Heyman and, and uh, they bring in Brody Dene from, from Virginia Tech, who's a real exciting power hitter. Um, you know, Colby Shelton from Alabama. My goodness, what a, what a home run acquisition that was in, in the portal. A guy that hit uh, 25 home runs, the true freshman, you know, for, for Alabama. It sounds like he's going to play shortstop this year. He's, he's really leaned up his body. To me, that's one of the question marks about Florida. Um is, is he really a shortstop? You know, we've heard good reports in the fall. Our, our guys who saw Florida in the fall thought he looked a lot more athletic, but, um, you know, defense wasn't really his strength last year. And so that's something that Florida needs to, needs to figure out. But um, if, if he can do it, then boy, that's, that's really a, a huge key for that team because they're going to hit a ton. He's going to hit a ton. Um, and then you know, on the mound, I mean, it's, it's just every year they got so many power arms and, and that's the case again this year. Uh, less proven commodities now in, in the rotation. Uh, I think the pitching uh, has to answer some things. I mean, Kate Fisher makes that, that transition from the bullpen into the Friday night role. Uh, you got a couple of true freshmen there with Liam Peterson and, and Luke McNeely, guys that, again, are super talented. I mean, the same kind of 
arms that Florida brings in, it feels like every year, these mid to high nineties guys that just it, 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 the arm action looks beautiful, all that stuff. Uh, but they got to prove it in the sec. So, um, you know, I think that the talent level on the mound is, is really, really good, but uh, less proven than the lineup. Aaron, it feels like Arkansas at some point has got to get themselves one, right? It's it's hard to believe this program never won a national championship. And at some point, right, you 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 keep showing up every single day. You keep putting in the work. You keep doing what Dave Van Horn's been doing for so long. You expect the baseball gods to smile on you. And it almost, Aaron, feels like at this point, Arkansas has become that team where I look at them like, okay, they're really good, but they're going to find a way to blow it in the postseason, whether it's losing a super, it's get eliminated early in the regional, it's go to Omaha and miss a pot fly they should have caught in foul territory. Do the baseball gods, can they finally shine on Arkansas this year? Because it feels like they obviously at three, they have the group to do it. Yeah, and it's going to happen. You know, it's it's only a matter of time. It could very well be this year. Um, I think I've been telling people that when we did our, our top 25 deliberations, I had Arkansas number one on my board, even, even ahead of Wake Forest. I, I, I think their pitching staff is truly elite. It's important to remember that, you know, you could say the same things about Mississippi State before 2021 and, and Ole Miss before 2022. They'd never won at all. You know, they consistent postseason teams knocking on the door, knocking on the door. Um, and then they did it, you know, and that's just, there's gotta be a first time at some point, you know, and, and it's, it's easy to say, well, they're, they're, they're cursed or whatever, but like Pedro Martinez said, I, I don't believe in curses. You know, that's uh, uh, the Red Sox had one in 86 years and then they won four times, you know, it, it'll happen. They just got to break through, but uh, certainly that the pitching is special here with Hagen Smith and, and Brady Tigert and Mason Molina. I think that's as good a rotation as you're going to find in the country. I think only Wake Forest really could, can compete with that that trio um it's super deep on the mound really i think the bullpen will be strong because they just got so many good arms and a really exciting group of sophomores that, that i think are, are ready to take that next step and help anchor the bullpen and you know they, they kind of had to retool the, the the lineup with the portal again which is a recurring theme that's just the world we live in now but uh, once again i think they did really well with uh uh, the Aloy kid at shortstop from, from Sacramento state, really physical. I mean, got to play better defense than he did last year. That is a little bit of a question mark like Florida is, a, is the defense at shortstop. That's such a critical position, but certainly it's an offensive super talent, you know, with power and the ability to hit for average and, uh, and Jack Wagner, they brought in from Tarleton and, um, Ty Wilmersmeyer from, from Missouri. I think these are really nice pieces that they they brought in through the portal that kind of supplement the core they had coming back, led by Kendall Diggs. So I don't think it's uh, an elite offense the way Florida is, but I think it's going to be a very good offense and a you know solid enough defense uh, behind that elite pitching style. Now, Aaron, like you mentioned, from four to the rest of the top ten, we'll say there was a gap after the fourth team, which was LSU. Vanderbilt's at six, A&M's at eight, Tennessee is at nine. Of those three teams, who do you like the most or who do you think has the most potential to maybe jump up in that conversation with the top three SEC teams, Florida, Arkansas, and LSU? Yeah, I think it's it's Vanderbilt. You know, they're they're probably not that far removed from that top tier. Um, and, and that's because, again, it's, it's big-time power pitching, you know, that um, we, we need to see a few more things kind of approve themselves again. I mean, that's a recurring theme here, but you know, with Andrew Dukanich and, and uh, um, you know, Bryce Cunningham and, and uh, Grayson Carter, these are big, big, big arms, you know, they just haven't quite done it yet. Uh, you do have Carter Holton and, and, and Devin Futrell from the left side. I love those two guys. I think you can build your, your staff around those two guys and then just kind of let those other power arms filter in wherever they fit. Uh, and, and it's got a chance to be a, a very, very, very good pitching staff, but a little bit less proven, I think, than, than Arkansas, for instance, or, um, you know, but but in, in the lineup, too. I mean, I think there's there's some experience here. There's certainly a lot of athleticism, um, but it, it, it doesn't strike me as an elite lineup, but it strikes me as a very capable lineup. It does have, you know, various dimensions. You've got some pop, you got some speed. I think RJ Austin is, is going to be a, a superstar as a sophomore. That's a guy that I expect to make a big, a big jump, the the center fielder there. Um, you know, so they, they've got some nice pieces, but they don't really have a, a kind of a proven like bell cow to, to hang the whole thing on offensively. I mean, Austin is probably the guy that I, I'm the highest on. And uh, I like Davis Diaz. Like, these are these are players that have nice track records. Jonathan Vastine as well. Uh, but you don't really have that kind of elite offensive track record that you can you can lean upon. So, Aaron, as you look at the rest of the top 25, and I, I look at Tennessee at nine is what I want to mention. I, I think, Aaron, truly, it's a matter of when, not if. Tony Vitello wins a College World Series in Knoxville. I just think with the way they swing it and what he's building, 
uh, that program. It's incredible. But I look at 19 and 25 as well, Alabama and South Carolina. And I think what's interesting, you know, the expectations are as high as anywhere else in Columbia, South Carolina. Gamecock fans are itching to see South Carolina get back to Omaha for the first time in over a decade. And then Alabama, I think what's fascinating about them is I feel like this is a team kind of left for dead last year after all the scandals yeah. and stuff and the way they they rallied around each other and I went on a run and you know you guys now have them in the top 20 think they can obviously you know build off what they did last year just talk a little bit about Alabama and then South Carolina specifically two teams that you know on the back end of the top 25 but two dangerous teams in their own right yeah and dangerous I think for different reasons I think in Alabama's case I'm probably the highest on our staff when it comes to Alabama because I just really, really like their arms. Um, I mean, it's uh, it, it's probably a group of, of four arms or so that I think stack up with anybody when it comes to talent, you know, with, with Penn Hess and um, Aiden Moza, Riley Quick, Alton Davis. So I'll, I'll take those four guys and build my staff around them. And again, they, they've done a good job um, adding pieces to that. Greg Ferrone they got from Louisville, who's really made a, a step forward this fall power stuff from the left side. Um, you know, Zane Adams, the true freshman has got a very bright future. They've got a lot of decent pieces there around that core, but, uh, I think that pitching staff has a chance to be special. Um, lineup should be solid enough again, really new lineup. I mean, really, I think Matt Cassetti is the only returner they've got from last year in the lineup you like to have your catcher back. That's a good place to start, but they had to hit the portal hard uh, and, and they hit the Juco ranks hard and they did very well in, in those two areas. And so it's a totally new look lineup. We need to see how they adjust to the SEC, but uh, it, it's a, it's an exciting group. I think the pitching staff is the strength for sure. Whereas South Carolina, you know, it's, it's the offense I think is going to be elite. It's, it's a team that, you know, they, they kind of built two years ago, modeling themselves after the, the A&M team that went to Omaha Um and, and they, they wanted that kind of formula, the guys that work a ton of deep counts, uh, get on base, draw walks, and hit for power. And, and they did that last year, and, and they're going to do that again this year. I mean, they've got so much back with, with two All-Americans. I mean, Ethan Petrie and, and Cole Messina, such a great place to start. Uh, and Gavin Casas, who hit for power, 19 home runs last year. Um, you know, they, they've got some other new starters that, that kind of need to uh, solidify themselves. I, I think Will Tippett at shortstop is, is kind of a pick to click. I thought he looked great defensively in the fall. I thought he, he really moves well at short. He's certainly got the athleticism. He's got arm strength, but we need to see it, you know, and, and we need to see him take a, a step forward offensively. He hit, hit 182 last year. Um, so, you know, there, that is a little bit of a question mark, but uh, you, you bring in a, a Blake Jackson and a Kennedy Jones, guys that are, you know, talented players in the outfield have not played in the SEC yet, but uh, again, you know, they had really good falls. Jackson especially had a great fall. And I think that's going to be maybe a guy that will make him go. So uh, I think it's going to be a, the kind of offense that just gives teams real headaches, you know, and, and I think it's going to be a real pain in the butt to pitch to those guys. Uh, the only question for, for South Carolina is, is the pitching piece because I think it's it's got solid depth, you know, uh, 13, 14, 15 guys that all have, you know, 93 or better, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, but they don't really have a, a true number one. Um, it's kind of a staff that has some number two and number three type arms. Uh, is Eli Jones going to take that next step and be the Friday night guy? Is is uh, is, is Matthew Becker, you know, is, is that going to be a solid SEC weekend guy? Um, yeah, it's got a chance to be to be solid. I, I don't think it's going to be an exceptional uh, staff, but, but, uh, you know, there's, there's nice pieces there. We just need to see them take that next little step. That's why we have them toward the back of the top 25 and not higher. Cause I do think that pitching is, is a separator, um, in this league. Aaron fit D one baseball.com. Those guys do a great job. Aaron, last thing, and I'll get you out of here of the maybe under the radar sec teams. Who would you buy stock in right now to take, to make a run late in the season and maybe make a run to Omaha. One of those teams that, you know, again, many folks aren't talking about, maybe not even in the top 25. Yeah. Well, let's, I mean, let's touch on Kentucky. Cause I think it's easy to overlook those guys. Um, they were in a super regional last year. Nobody saw that coming. I didn't see it coming. You know, I, I hand up. Uh, they, they caught me by surprise. Um, there's a decent amount back from a super regional team and, and nobody's really talking about these guys. Uh, it is, you know, a different pitching staff, um, you know, that, that 
again, needs to establish itself in the SEC. But we think there's a chance. I mean, if, if that staff comes together, it might be better than last year's pitching staff. We, we'll see. Uh, but, you know, again, they, they pushed the action so well last year on the base pass. That was their style as a unique brand. They really stood out apart from the rest of these SEC teams where it's just a lot of, you know, stand in the box and, and take a hack and try to hit home runs. Kentucky plays a, a different style, which which I like. And I think they kind of found a competitive advantage there. There's still a lot of athleticism in this lineup. Um, you know, with, with Ryan Waldschmidt is, is back and Ty Crittenberger is a, is a stolen base threat and, you know, uh, Amelia and Petre, I mean, they got, they got guys that can still do that. Uh, they, I, I think it's a team that's kind of lying in the weeds a little bit here. I'd, I'd keep an eye on Kentucky. Aaron, you guys do a great job over at D1Baseball.com. Keep up the great work. Let folks know, by the way, where they can check you out specifically on social media and check out all the great stuff D1 Baseball is doing. Obviously, you have SEC Baseball Extra, Highway to Hoover, a lot of great things happening with D1 Baseball. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to see the the site continue to grow with with Mark Etheridge and Joe Healy now doing the SEC Extra thing. I think that's uh, it's been a really neat product, and it's I think fans have have really received it well in, in the first year of that thing. Um, so check that out, uh, SEC Extra at, at D1Baseball.com. Uh, I'm at uh, at Aaron Fit on Twitter. You can find me there. You you find you know season preview stuff every day from now until opening day. We've got uh, a lot coming for you at D1Baseball.com. Aaron, appreciate you taking the time, my friend. It's always a pleasure. You got it. My pleasure.